Hi, so welcome back to another video. This is going to be my in-depth solo KK guide. Uh, just to warn you, this might be fairly lengthy and I'm going to try and put uh, some times now up on the screen so you can skip through or just look for particular parts of the video that you might be struggling with with a KK solo. The first thing to note is that it does take practice and you will need to repeat stuff. Uh, I'm going to try and go in as much depth as possible. So I'll start off nice and simple, just going to run through uh, gear and items required and then go through KK's attack rotations and then how as a player we counter these and the best rotations to try and do. And then I might throw in a few little clips of particular scenarios that you might find yourself in and the best way to deal with them. Okay, so let's dive straight into gear then. Most of it's fairly self-explanatory, DPS gear with a Keras and then your best offhand uh, melee weapon, so that might be a Kopesh, might be a Drygor, and then your best bow, so a Noxious bow is perfectly fine, but here I have a Seren God bow. Probably the most important part of gear when you're soloing is a Vampirism Scrimshaw, uh, extremely useful for healing and making sure you don't run out of food. Rune pouch is very optional. I have Vengeance runes were on Luna Spellbook, um, but it's not really needed. It's only just a little bit more DPS. Um, and then auras, as you can see on the right hand side, I always prefer to use Zerk Aura. It does most damage, uh, especially if you're off task, then you're going to be wanting to use either Berserker or Brawler Aura. Uh, because you might will splash quite a lot on melee phase, um, but the auras are in sort of order there. I would use then dark magic after that, especially on task. Dark magic's really good because your accuracy and damage is already really high anyway. It goes without saying then that obviously once you become more accomplished at solos, you can take more and more switches as you need less food, etc. You can obviously take normal brews and rock tails to start with. Uh, Guthix restores, which are the the blue pots or uh, flasks in this inventory, do heal less, but obviously they don't brew your stats down very much. And then I just have the super brews there for emergency healing. I've kind of rarely used those. The only other really nice thing to take is a numbing root, which you can see there's two of in the bottom of my inventory here. And we'll get to how you use those later. Quickly, there's a few familiar options. Um, if you're starting out, you might want to take a yak, although even if you're starting out uh, doing solos, it's kind of rare that you're going to run out of food. You're probably just going to fail due to the sort of insta-kill mechanic or being comboed out. Um, so a yak isn't actually that useful here at KK. I recommend using a blood nigh hill if you're off task and then a steel titan if you're on task. One last thing about gear is weapon poison. I always have a one dose weapon poison in the start top of my inventory. This allows me to obviously drink it just before I start the kill. And then if it starts on a mage phase, I can switch to my bow and I still have the inventory space to take my melee weapon and my defender off. Moving on then, so first off is the range form of KK. Uh, as you can see on screen, I've put up basically the attack rotation. So KK does two attacks uh, and a bleed in that doesn't count. It then does one stun, which you should be either anticipated or freedomed for, uh, so it shouldn't do anything to you. He then does two more attacks and then the green insta kill attack. This you will be skipping using either destroy, backhand or kick. And then he does two more attacks before doing a dig and or an incendiary shot. It can be both at the same time and then he just repeats this process. So the range spawn start rotation you're going to see on screen is one that I'd recommend to anyone trying to learn to start off with. It's very good, completely consistent. As you can see here, I'm not on task and I don't have Zerka Aura, so I'm just using normal Brawler and it makes it work very well. The reason I highly recommend doing this rotation is you don't get stunned and it doesn't require anything to be completely tick perfect. So it's easy to learn and count uh, KK's attacks at the same time. It's also very close in damage to the optimum rotation and allows you to also lure KK to the east side of the map away from the minions right at the start of the kill. It's definitely worth pointing out here, you can see that I only get attacked by that very east spawn minion and there's only one. Uh, a lot of your damage in a KK solo will come from the minions because you have to pray against KK and not magic against the minions. This basically means you should be hugging the east wall at almost all times. On the range spawn, after it does the first dig, as I said, hug the east wall and then you basically just want to be doing both your bleeds, so that's slaughter and blood tendrils. Uh, and then make sure you anticipate all freedom before you go into assault because of that middle stun you don't want it to be cancelled. Uh, other than that then just repeat and keep using threshes. Make sure you destroy after the fourth hit. The most important thing to remember about this range spawn is that after four attacks you do stun it with either destroy, backhand or kick. Um, destroy is good because it does more damage so often you're going to be in your zerk. However it is essential that you cancel destroy after only two hits. 
with another ability. Otherwise, if you let it do the third hit, it will re-stun KK because Destroy stuns on the first hit and the third hit. And this will make KK do a double dig, which takes up a lot of time. It's just a massive waste. As you can see here on screen now, I let Destroy hold on to the third hit. KK digs, he comes up and then does another dig straight away. Moving on then to Mage Phase. Now Mage Phase isn't very technical. As you can see on screen, the rotation is fairly similar uh, to the range spawn, except for you always want to skip that, for that dig. So after the fourth attack, it's the same. Instead of a stun, it's a dig. You just use either Binding Shot or Tight Bindings to skip that. It then does two or three more attacks and you don't know which of these it's going to be, unfortunately. Uh, so I normally just stun after the second one. With this as well, do make sure that KK is southwest of your character and this means that he'll surge into the wall instead of going sort of north or south, which is not where you want him. He'll stay in the middle and just surge straight into the east wall. The only way that you can skip this surge and just allow yourself as much DPS time as possible without him doing any specs is if you hit the 195k minion Marks. You need to do 55k damage with uh, just mage thresholds pretty quickly. So this is sometimes tough. It depends on how practiced you are. Um, but as you can see on screen, I'll just whip it through and you can see that it literally goes from 250k start to 130k-ish uh, without doing any specs at all. So melee phase then, probably the most annoying and complicated of the three with the key element obviously being to avoid the insta-kill green attack. This can be done using bladed dive, which I've shown how to do exactly in a separate video, which I will link in the description and hopefully on screen as well. Apart from that, there isn't really a key or main rotation you have to stick to, obviously apart from being able to count KK's attacks um, and don't use your freedom until you know it's the right time. So right at the end of this rotation after the two attacks, just before he's gonna insta green. What I tend to do is not even bother using means to skip the green at the start of the kill because using bladed dive, once you get used to it, isn't very difficult and you know the timing. What I generally do is I use my destroy in the Zerk to skip the surge, which is probably the most time consuming spec. And also it means you don't have to be careful of the life points and you can just DPS straight past the threshold which basically makes the kill faster. The only thing I do really try and do is when I get to the 65k minions, if I'm doing a melee phase and it's around the right HP, I will sort of wait one or two attacks to stun it past and use the minions uh, as a skip. This is generally more beneficial because you're not in a berserk and you're not right at the start of the kill. So that's pretty much the reasoning for it. For those of you that do want to know how to um, skip the green on the, on the start of a kill using the minions, Basically you do the similar base rotation, so you start off with the Zerka drum pot, and then once you get to about 195-200k, to make sure you wait until um, the second attack, which will be normally be a slaughter or a second dismember. Um, and I use destroy to skip past the surge as well, which basically just speeds this up so it doesn't mean you end up waiting too long. If you have less DPS, then you probably don't want to skip using the destroy. I end up just I still use freedom just the same. Uh, and then I just decimate it past the 190k mark and the minions will just spawn. So that's pretty much it from me. Uh, that, that covers all bases as far as I'm concerned for a KK solo. Um, just a few tips then to help speed up your kills or things to focus on when trying to learn this. So first of all then is focus on the anticipating freedom. Um, it stuns at everything at KK. If you get stunned at the wrong time, it can be deadly. Uh, use your debuff bar to help you. Uh, as you can see on screen here, I actually finish this kill and I get a bit complacent and I turn my soul split on and I get incendiary shot and nearly died. If that had been a dry girl and I died, I would have been absolutely mad. So don't let that happen to you. Three is careful of green shields. Uh, they can Green and red shields can KK can do at any point below 110k HP. They're more common right towards the lower end. So right as you're going to kill it, don't zerk straight into a green shield. Be ready to get off if it is on really low life points, uh, especially when it's melee when you're not going to hit as well. Do res and devotion the incendiary shots. It always appears in your buff bar, so it's not that difficult to do. Do use minions for, to your advantage as well. Uh, watch KK's HP, um, especially on melee phase. And don't forget to hug that east wall, otherwise you'll be hit by a lot of minions and it can really hurt. Um, and then the last little trick, which I will try and get a clip of now. If you do mess up the green for whatever reason on range or melee phase, if you spam freedom and your comp or max cape telly at the same time, you can telly out right as it would insta-kill you, uh, which will save you dying a few times when you're trying to learn this. Uh, and lastly, if you don't have any minions on you, resonance, 
it after your bladed dive is a great way to get back to match at max HP. That's it for this video. If you do have any questions, queries, or anything I can I failed to mention, do put it in the comments down below. It has taken me an extremely long time to get the clips and uh, put this together, so any likes are um, greatly appreciated. And uh, if you do enjoy the content, do feel free to subscribe as well. If you do have any other questions, do feel free to pop them in my stream chat as well, and I'll be sure to answer them as best I can.